We're here with leading insolvency practitioner Lane Bednash, um, who's been working with the creditors of the BDOE, um, covers over 120 liquidation cases per year. Lane, thank you very much for your time. Um, just first of all, can you explain the, the process that the BDOE is going through for us, just, to, just for people that don't understand the process? Yeah, the process they opted for um, is the most common form of liquidation. It's called a, a voluntary liquidation, and it involves the directors of the company um, basically conceding that the company is insolvent and looking to the shareholders of the company to pass the resolution that they believe should be passed to place the company into a insolvent voluntary liquidation. That's the process. And I was approached by uh, two creditors um, who had a vested interest in the outcome of that liquidation, uh, who together represented more than 50% of the reported creditors uh, that the directors had reported in their report to the creditors shortly before the meeting. We know a few days ago there was a creditors meeting. Um, would you be able to first of all explain what that is for people uh, and then what happened during that meeting, if that's okay? Uh, the the creditors meeting actually was um, requested by the creditors themselves. Originally, the directors opted for a uh, deemed consent procedure, which wouldn't involve a creditors meeting. It would just be a rubber stamping exercise, providing none of the creditors uh, raised any concerns. And in this particular case, I was approached by two creditors uh, and they insisted that there was a, a meeting held, either physical or virtual, uh, so that the creditors could have the opportunity to present their questions to the board of directors of the BDOE. Um, that was the purpose of that creditors meeting. And in fact, a number of creditors attended, not just the two I was representing, there was, there was other creditors there. But unfortunately, there was a no show by the directors of the company who convened that meeting. So effectively, we were attending a meeting that they had convened and they hadn't turned up for that meeting. So we never got the opportunity to ask any questions of the directors. Lane, would you have normally expected a, a director to attend that meeting and what was the reaction of the, the creditors to the, to the no-show? Um, well, it, it is a requirement for the directors to chair the meeting of creditors. So yes, you would expect um, directors to be available for that meeting. You don't expect to be stonewalled effectively uh, by the board of directors having convened the meeting and having invited uh, creditors to attend. You know, the creditors took their time to attend, to ask their questions, and yet the directors effectively stonewalled them. Uh, the, the, ultimately though, the uh, company is placed into liquidation by the shareholders, which in this case obviously is the BDO. So um, the directors will argue that because no resolution was passed to put the company into the liquidation in the end, they needn't attend. But that's not the case as far as our creditors are concerned. They wanted the director to be present. They expected the BDO to do the honourable thing. Having started the insolvency process, they expected the BDO to pass that resolution. And I think they were quite surprised. We know you've worked on over 120 cases per year, but is this something that you've seen before, Lane? Uh, honestly, it's extremely rare, extremely rare. The, uh, the, the, the most, most liquidations start with the directors um, con confiding in the share with the shareholders and together they agree to, to proceed down this voluntary liquidation route. And in this particular case, from what I understand, the, this process started back in, in March, April, sometime like that was the first time they, they embarked on this route. And to get to this stage, to sit in front of a room of creditors, knowing that the resolution hasn't been passed is extremely rare. And in the, in the other cases where it has happened, and I can only think of probably on one hand how many times it's happened in my 25, 30 years, um, proper genuine explanations are provided um, out of courtesy to the creditors that took the time to attend. Um, and in this particular instance, the creditors left that meeting not having any understanding why the BDO had taken this stance. And it doesn't appear to be in line with what the directors, the BDOE wanted. Um, I'd even go on to say that it's one thing having uh, salt rubbed in the wounds of these creditors, but it feels like they've had neat iodine put on those wounds. And, and if I'm being honest, they're smarting and they're not happy. We know you've got 
significant amounts of expertise and experience in this sort of thing, but in your professional opinion, um, why are the BDO be following this course of action? Any are you cynical maybe over over their reasons for it? Um, yes, I think I think it would be fair to say I'm cynical. I mean, when you look at what they've done, uh, they just before the time of this liquidation or potential liquidation, they sell all the tangible assets back to the BDO. So the BDOE has got no tangible assets. And the money that they raised to do that, which uh, somewhere in the region of £7,000, was in the main used to pay for this process up to uh, last week's meeting. Um, and obviously, they've spent that money. No resolutions have been passed. And they've got absolutely nothing to show uh, for, for, for what they've done. I mean, it's just crazy. They've left themselves now without an insolvency practitioner appointed, with £1,300 left in the bank account, no assets because they've all been, all been sold, and no prospects of a recovery. Why didn't they pass the resolution? The obvious thing would have been to pass the resolution. Unless, unless, and uh, I'm guessing... And maybe there's something that they're concerned about. Maybe there is something that, that, that they're hiding and they don't want the company to go into liquidation for because I cannot see a reason why they didn't pass that resolution when they should have done. And just a final one, Lane, uh, what is your overall conclusion of the proceedings over the last few months? So my overall conclusion, it probably matches that of the insolvency practitioner who they nominated um, and who ultimately wasn't appointed. He himself described the position and the state of this liquidation as shambolic. Uh, and I think that's the right word. It, it, it's ridiculous. It should have been a straightforward resolution. And instead, we find ourselves where we are today with nothing achieved. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time, Lane. It's a pleasure.